dude, 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 dude. It's big, it's green. It's a Jameson Bomba. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. A lot of people ask me, what are the ultimate herping conditions? And there's no easy answer for that because it's different everywhere you go. But I can save you a little time and universally say that downpours like this, never good. We had made arrangements to go looking for a different target animal tonight, but with the rain, I think we're gonna scratch that and change course. Because after heavy rains like this, it's a great time to find amphibians. So the one thing the tropics never lack is rain and we've just gotten a nice storm coming through. But that means it's a great night for fibbing or looking for amphibians. And our target tonight is the reed frog. So we're gonna peruse the jungles in search of some frogs. There's a lot of frogs here. Togo has great amphibian diversity. The frogs are out tonight. That's what a good rain does. It just draws them all out. So this little beauty, this is the striped reed frog. If there's ever been a cute little frog, these guys definitely are in their running. It's not the prettiest one, so we're gonna keep looking. The striped reed frog. Ooh. Adios, amigo. So another thing you'll find when you're looking for amphibians at night like this will be some of your fun diurnal animals. Check this out. So this is the giant African land snail. These guys are not legal in the United States. Cool, cool animals. Check this out, African giant millipede. Some people back home might be familiar with these because people keep them as pets. So this is an African golden rumped wolf spider. This thing, the head on this thing looks just like a tarantula. Nice find, but not what we're looking for. Dude, 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 dude. It's big, it's green. It's a Jameson Bamba. I don't know if climbing up there is gonna help at all. Well, unfortunately, I don't think there's a good chance of getting that one down, so we're gonna have to let this one go. Too bad, Jameson's Mamba, how cool. Hey dude, we got a bufo. So this is the West African toad. I don't know why, I, I, toads make me laugh. Bufo, they're funny critters. So when I say bufo, that was the genus for all toads up until kind of recently where they broke them apart. Now only some of the old world toads are bufo. I like to use it as a general name for toads though, because doesn't it kind of fit them, the kind of bulldogs of the amphibian world? Toads kind of look similar wherever you go. This one, I mean, obviously has some different distinctions. It's got a little shorter nose, some speckling, but toads are toads, bufos, always fun to see. They just kind of have an honorary personality for an amphibian. Definitely not our target, but anywhere in the world you go, there's always a new toad to meet. Later, bufo. Oh, dude, check it out, check it out. <laughs> this is awesome. So this is something you don't see every day. This is a shovel snout frog. All right, little buddy. There you go, wow. Oh, my first shovel snout frog. <laughs> okay, but let me go, let me go. Ah, sorry. Just wanna check you out. Man, look at that, there's nothing normal frog looking about this guy. 
so weird looking. He's got that pointy little nose and beady eyes and just a squishy little guy. They aren't seen that often because they really only come out right after rain. They are termite specialists. So most of the year they live underground. But when it rains, they come out opportunistically feeding on those little wood eaters. So these guys are occasionally kept as pets. And their requirements are basically deep, semi-moist substrate and a diet of pinhead crickets, fruit flies, and termites, because termites are what they naturally eat. Make sure that bedding is not soaking wet, but it does need to have humidity and it does need to be deep, because that nose is for burrowing. I'm gonna let him go on his way. All right, my funny-nosed little friend. Happy hunting. Eat those termites. Our target are the reed frogs. We're looking for the green reed frog and the striped reed frog. These frogs don't get very big, making them excellent candidates for vivariums. You can make nice planted tanks and they'll take full advantage of it and you get to have a little living ecosystem for them. So we're going to look on the grass, on the trees, on the ground and see what we stir up in search of frogs. Okay, so I'm gonna actually mark this exact spot on my GPS watch. Yeah, I think that, that is definitely a boom song. There's no way we can get it down without possibly risking injury to us, the snake, or falling in the water. Such an iconic African snake. Super toxic coolabrid, rad arboreal huge eyes, visual snakes. I mean, I've always loved these guys since I was a little kid, and to see one has me pretty excited, but it's not our target, so we've got to move on and uh, leave the uh, boom song or Afrikaans for tree snake in the tree. Spider, grasshopper. Oh dude, there's a frog. This is the reed frog. This reed frog has tons of personality. They're cool because they're compact, they don't take a lot of room, but they still have a lot of persona energy and movement to them. You can give them really planted tanks and really set them up nicely in a smaller amount of room. Well, it's been a really long night. We've seen a lot of really, really neat amphibians. I'm gonna take my measurements and I'll let this guy on his way. Well, it's been a long night loaded with a lot of frogs, but it's been a lot of fun. But, after all this walking, I think it's time we hop off to bed. Mission complete. <laughs>